You ready, buddy? Go ahead, let's go. We're running just a few minutes late. Are you excited, Bubba? You ready to see your new clinic? This morning, Kim and I went to a new ABA clinic, which is so exciting. It has been a year since Kato has had ABA therapy um, in the clinic setting. So as I've told you guys before, after leaving JSA this past year has been very much so a transitional year. And we've been lucky enough that his ABA therapist that he had at a at JSA, his specialist, the uh, BCBA, she stuck around. She stuck by our side. She saw us through the transition. About once a month, we'll do a phone consultation um, or Zoom, you know, whatever, your telehealth, whatever you want to call it. And we'll just kind of touch base. Um, you know, she will give me some recommendations, some really good feedback, just because she does know Kidel so well throughout the years of studying and analyzing his behavior patterns I mean and she spent so much time with him it's just so nice to have somebody that understands Kadel from like an inside perspective like really gets him and knows him and knows his history as well it's just so nice she's just been such a valuable asset to us over the past six years but you know the last year of really not having, you know, a whole lot of other outside support, you know, and we kind of weren't really sure what direction we were going to head in after JSA because at JSA, the clinic, the ABA clinic is under the same building as the school. So although it's technically separate for, you know, billing purposes, insurance purposes, it's all under the same roof and there is a lot of collaboration that goes on, which is really nice because, you know, it, it made Kiddell very successful in the classroom and things like that. But moving on to this year, you know, he's doing well in school. We had a rough summer, as you guys know. I kind of explained that all in a previous vlog. Lots of regressions and, you know, physical meltdowns and things that we haven't seen from Kidel in a long time. It kind of coincided with me trying to set some personal goals for him at home, like developmental things, working on uh, life skills and chores. But the big thing was reducing his tablet time, which kind of just set him off, set him through the roof, and it was just not smooth. Let's just say that. So Kiddo's um, behavior specialist that we talked to every month said, let's get him back in the clinic setting. It's been a while. He's responded very well in the past to more of the traditional clinic setting, like let's go back and let's let's get that back in our, our corner. So that's what we're doing and I'm, it's funny that, I don't know, I think I felt so comfortable with, you know, the, the programs and the protocols that he was on previously that, you know, I felt like I didn't need a whole lot of guidance, if that makes sense. Like I, I understood everything very clearly. It made sense to me. It was easy to understand. Like it, it the, the programs that he was on, it kind of just became so intertwined with our daily life that I didn't really feel like I needed a whole lot of coaching from like an ABA specialist. But at the same time, it's very beneficial to have the programs and the protocols reinforced by a second party or by somebody else other than just me at home. Because, you know, we have a parent-child relationship and it's just sometimes there's things outside of autism that make you know, parent-child relationships difficult. I mean, everybody knows 
sometimes kids just respond and listen better to teachers and other mentors better than they do their own parents um, because they just get to that kind of teenage rebellious phase you know and I definitely am starting to realize that we're entering we're, we're seeing some pre-signs of that we're entering into that phase which I'm not looking forward to but you know I mean that's just part of life and that's part of our our journey together and um you know I'm gonna embrace it and I'm gonna hopefully we're gonna hopefully make the best of it because I love even though he's challenging he's a bit of a challenge but um you know I love I love all versions of Kato even when he's not at his best I still love him and am obsessed with him and you know even when he's about to go through his difficult teenage years I'm still gonna love that version of Kato because that's everyone's journey that they have to go through we all have to get through our teenage years and hormones and all that so you know it, he's not unique in that aspect but autism just kind of adds a layer of complexity you know make it a little bit different make it a little bit more challenging and it never hurts to have somebody else helping to reinforce the things that we have discovered with kiddo that works you know at JSA they spent so much time you know really going through process of elimination of like what approach is going to work best for kiddo what kind of communication tools can we use that will help him in the most way what kind of you know de-escalation procedures or basically like what approach is going to work best for Kato it took a lot of time to find that sweet spot but we really did at JSA and we really got in a good groove over there and again to the point to where I was like this is just our life now you know this is just the way we communicate with each other um, and I do plan on making a, a series of videos to kind of go over the, basically it's like the three main protocols that we live by. Um, and I'm hoping to carry that over into the new ABA clinic because we kind of found what works with Kato. But the problem that became of it is that he was kind of struggling to generalize it. He was struggling to, for it to be second nature like it once was, you know, it was kind of like, it's kind of like if you only go to the gym and work out uh, once a week you're not really going to maintain great cardio you know you got to do it several times a week and then you can maintain good cardio i know that's a silly analogy but that i don't know how else to put it um so we had our assessment meeting with our new aba providers today and i'm super stoked they seem really nice really open-minded willing to learn um, you know, Kato's protocols. I'll do separate videos on that because there's a lot to explain. But the whole goal is really just to get Kato back to baseline, get him back to where he was before this bumpy roller coaster of a summer happened. Um, get him back to where he his baseline was, so that he can be in like a teachable state of mind, so he can kind of achieve and get back to that state of equilibrium that he once was in to where everything was just kind of balanced. Um, you know, he wasn't super rigid or super anxious or s super high, super low, like he has been lately. Um, so the whole goal is just like, let's get him back to baseline. And then maybe we can focus on, you know, some more practical goals. Once he's in a teachable state of mind, we can focus on some practical goals. Like I would love to continue to work on reducing his tablet time. I would love for him to work on some social skills because he's really taken an interest in, uh, you know, greeting strangers at a grocery store and trying to approach his peers and interact with, you know, other people. So I would really love to focus on some of those things, you know, life skills, chores, things like that. But we got to get him back to baseline first. And once we can do that. I know he's just going to kind of, you know, what I'm hoping is that things will just fall into place and he can relax and not be so rigid all day and, and so uptight and so anxious. So we'll see how it goes. Um, his current behavioral specialist, the one that we have had for years and touch base over the 
the phone together, she actually knows the owners of this new clinic and it's just like a coincidence. So that just makes me feel good. In the conversations I've had with this new clinic, I've gotten really strong, content feelings that they're competent. I, you know, they seem very trustworthy. Um, so I'm, I'm really at peace with this decision. I'm really excited. It is kind of that like, oh, we're starting over feeling, you know, but I think that hopefully, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes, but I'm feeling really positive about it and I'm really excited. Mm. Mm. Are you in there, Kato? Or is that a ghost? Is our condo haunted? I was scared that there was a haunted ghost in my bed. It's just you. All right, you relax. Take a load off. Let me TV. Yes, you can have mommy's TV. All right, Kiddo's had his after school dose of popsicles and now he's just gonna relax in my bed and chill out for a little bit because school definitely tuckers him out a bit. It's also so stinking hot outside. I think I'm gonna make some brownies. We're expecting a storm. School's actually closed tomorrow because there's a tropical storm that's expected to come through. So with that being said, I figured I'd make some hurricane brownies because why not? Hey buddy, do you want to come crack the egg? I know you like that. Or are you in the zone? It's your thing, you love cracking eggs. All right, so bang it on the side. Don't, just like this, right here. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah, what? The egg, it's just, we just need one egg. Did you do it right here? Tap, tap, tap. Put the phone down. There. Oh, good job. Here, I'll take the shell. Oh, no, just leave it. All right, let's go wash our hands. Good job, buddy. So going back to ABA, just kind of a different talking point on the subject is that, and the only reason that I feel like it's not a bad idea to bring up is because I know that there's a lot of other autism families that watch and comment. Um, you know, they've got a kid on the spectrum or a grandkid or something like that. And I know there's a lot of controversy or like mixed opinions about ABA and there really shouldn't be in my opinion. We well, you know ABA has a history of um, evolution like any specialty you know um, any specialty in medicine evolves what it is now what it's intended to be now it's just simply the studying of behaviors you know, because sometimes with autism there are really difficult behaviors, like really aggressive behaviors or, you know, certain things like, like pica, for example, you know, eating non-food objects. Kiddo has a history of that and we've had to consult with both speech and ABA on the best way to try and help him to not do that because it's obviously not healthy, not good for him. Um, you know, if he... If, it, if that behavior specifically were to have gotten out of control, it could be really detrimental to his health. So ABA is really just the studying of behaviors and figuring out ways to apply the best approach to help work through some of those behaviors and shape some of the behaviors, you know? It's not just about like, oh, he's hitting, he's aggressive. How can we not make him hit or not make him aggressive? It's also about studying the cause behind it. So why is he anxious? Why is he upset? You know, I'll give you a perfectly good example. So, Kadell's behavioral specialist that I've mentioned several times throughout this video, text me the other day and said you reported in March that she said or she said she was looking through her notes of our you know monthly consultations and said that she noticed I first reported in March that Kato's slapping behavior was back and she said guess what you reported in February and you know so much stuff happens on a daily basis that I don't always like remember 
like so much chaos <laughs> and, and craziness happens on you know a daily weekly basis with us um it just seems like our wheels are always turning and you know we just i mean we have a lovely life i'm not saying we don't but you know it's just a lot sometimes a lot to keep up with so it's really nice that during our meeting she kept these notes because she said in march i reported that I had noticed some slapping behaviors from Kidale that he hadn't done in a long time. And in February, I reported that I took away his tablet at bedtime because pr previous to February, you know, we've been trying to tackle this whole tablet time issue um, for a long time and just trying to get it to like a more appropriate place of moderation and not having it all day every day because anything in excess is not good for you so it's something we've been trying to target for a long time so apparently in February that was when I started taking it away at bedtime and he hasn't had it at bedtime since then like I we went cold turkey I said this is our starting place no more tablet in the bed for falling asleep we're we're just gonna go to sleep and I do remember we did struggle for a bit um, with him accepting that but it was just interesting that I implemented something new with this tablet and then a month later I reported he was starting to slap again. So it was honestly a huge weight lifted off my shoulders because I couldn't figure out like why is this slapping behavior all of a sudden resurfacing after years of you know aggressions kind of being under control like why all of a sudden and then, you know, things just continued to increase as I decided over the summer to start reducing his tablet time and putting restrictions on YouTube and things like that. It just shot through the roof. But the whole reason I'm mentioning all of this is to say that that is a perfect example of how ABA can be so beneficial because they just record so much data they uh, study and observe behavior patterns and trends and it's just a very useful um, tool I believe as an autism parent I believe it's a very useful tool now I'm not saying that every single ABA provider is ethical or you know transparent or moral or whatever or even good for that matter but I mean you can't blame the entire profession because you know one clinic isn't that good or one therapist wasn't that good I don't think that's fair I think that's kind of a narrow perspective to have it's just the same as saying like oh you know I've had like really bad doctors before um, pediatricians for Kidel you know some not so great pediatricians and it's kind of like okay well that doesn't mean all pediatricians are bad that means that that particular one wasn't that great so you look for other ones and you know you find the the place that gives you the best vibes um, you go with your gut always as a parent you go with your gut you go with the place that gives you the best vibes and that has the best reputation if you use it in the right way ABA has completely changed our life so you know I would encourage anybody any parent or you know caregiver that's struggling with their autistic loved one to consider it because for us personally it's been a game changer Ooh. you're still like yes. oh my gosh you're goof what's that picture? yeah <laughs>